Today's economic climate, it's really difficult to raise funds. But this team manages to raise, if not the same amount every year, sometimes even more than they have in the past. And they do it all based on volunteer work and contributions from the community. And as a group, they have raised over a half million dollars for spinal cord injury research. And it's just amazing to be in this uh, community of people that are just really tied together basically by the heart. It's, it's, it's really a pleasure to work with them. Meat sauce ragu for um, big ziti and a vegetarian pasta, Caesar salad, garlic bread, uh, tomatoes with basil, and cheesecake for dessert. It gets better every year, every single year. Unbelievable. Really, honestly, God, I come here, it's the best place in town to eat. We are a group of people with spinal cord injuries and our families and friends that volunteer for what we think is the most cutting edge research center in the world, and that would be the Reverbine Research Center. Grassroots funding of early stage research enables us to develop programs such that we can apply to multi-million dollar granting organizations like the NIH, California Institute of Regenerative Medicine, or other international bodies. A small bit of money allows us to move things forward to leverage a great deal of good. Spinal cord injury, a lot of people think that it is, just means you can't walk or you can't move your arms very well. Well, it's quite a bit more than that. Um, it affects your finances it, totally. It can affect your marriage, it affects your children, your family. Um, as far as what it physically affects, it physically affects everything below your level of injury. I've been injured um, for 15 years from a car accident. I'm a T12. Racing motocross. I had raced motocross for 25 years professionally. I got injured drifting right by my house. I flipped my truck and I broke my neck. I'm a C4. Recently returned from my second trip out for the post 9-11 stuff, out for all the stuff in Afghanistan. And, and uh, a couple weeks later I'm home and I was um, riding my motorcycle and I just went out to, I made a little few adjustments to the motor and uh, took it out on the road and some guy ran a red light and took a nice big dive, broke my neck. So lots of years in the Air Force and going and traveling and doing all that stuff, whether it's Nicaragua or Kosovo or all that stuff in Afghanistan, and never had a scratch, no problem. And then I come home and wonderful, uh, some guy decides to run a red light. And I'm here to support my friend Scotty Souza, who is an Air Force Academy graduate, involved in a motorcycle accident seven years ago that made him a quad. And my best shot at getting him to stand at the bar with me and having a beer is this research for cure. And we know, we've known Karen for over, yeah. oh, what, 30, 35, 40 years. Yeah, yeah a long time. Uh, she was my daughter's roommate. Karen and I worked at Wilbur Clyde Consultants, that's an engineering company, when I was about 21, and she's a couple years older. She was 23. And I used to see her in the bathroom because she was taking smoking breaks, because you couldn't smoke at your desk if you were a woman back in those days. Anyway, we were roommates and we both went on. We both went in real estate. Karen was uh, selling real estate and she had left her two daughters home with her husband and uh, she missed a turn and went forward over the embankment and her neck was broken. Yeah, I was 41 when I was injured and I wasn't used to asking for anything. Actually, I thought I was a pretty strong person and could do anything and thought I could be around if there was an earthquake to save family and friends. That's why I drove a Jeep, but uh, I wrecked in the Jeep. In the hospital, we went down to see her and she was in the hospital for quite a few months, recovering. And she kept taking therapy and she could actually hold her daughters in her arms. And uh, she got the electric wheelchair, and was wheeling them across the street to go to school. Assembly Bill 190. By, uh, by Bob Wykowski of Fremont would add a $3 traffic ticket. $3 on every traffic ticket, every motion ticket, not parking. But every time you drive and do something bad, you're eligible for a $3 extra. Now, that money would go to a spinal cord injury. This is crucial and it's fair because only people who drive badly would have to pay. 
the uh, people that drive safely would not be touched, taxpayers would not be touched, but all that money would go toward finding something which car crash often causes. 56% of all children who are paralyzed, spinal cord injury, are done in a car crash. 46% of all people who are paralyzed, spinal cord injury, happen in a car crash. The contributions from Research for Cure enable us to launch early phase projects, the ones that actually lead to the kind of preliminary data that allow us then to put together applications to go for larger grants to the National Institutes of Health, the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine, and other organizations. Some of the projects that were supported by Research for Cure led directly to the work that led to the clini clinical trials that are ongoing involving human embryonic stem cell applications. So we're delighted to be here and we thank Research for Cure for their years of support.